So focus on it again, like so. I've got these two trees in me. I've got those sheep. I had to climb over the, the wooden fence. It's a bit of POV style. So we're looking at the camera. We're focusing on, you've caught me with the lightest bag possible. I've got my little low pro. I've got nothing in it except for an item that I'm going to do a bit of a review on. I'm leaving my van here with the old Jackery solar panel on the roof. Just trying to get as much light as I can back into my, oh, that's not good, is it? Look, fish and chip wrappers everywhere. Back into my little Jackery power back so I can do a bit of um, editing in the van. This is going to be a, just a little bit of a scout. I've parked up near Coarse Fishery just in a lay-by, literally just pulled up in a lay-by. I wanted somewhere quiet to park for this evening and I've got quiet, I've got very much quiet because there's nothing around. I don't even know where I am really, apart from the fact the sea's over yonder, Snowden's over yonder, Hlangollen is where I came from in my last video over yonder. I've got me XT1 with the, um, infrared conversion and I'm in a sheet full of field. No, I'm not. I'm not in a sheet full of field at all, am I? I'm in a field full of sheep. Oh my goodness, I must be hungry. Yeah, um, it smells of fire. There's a fire, I think, in the fishery and it smells a bit, it smells like bonfire, which I don't mind, I quite like the smell. So I've got the GoPro on the go. I've got this microphone on the go. Please let me know what the volume sounds like. I'm testing it out and I'm literally never used it before. I've turned it on, I pulled it out of the bag, charged it up, plugged it in and I'm using it. So hopefully the volume's all right. There's no wind, no wind whatsoever. So I've got no wind muff on. I'm just literally gonna go for a walk. There's a row of trees up here and I thought, so I just go and have a look at these trees and take the infrared camera with me. So do you know anything about infrared? I don't. Okay, I have my camera converted, you may have seen in a couple of videos, I have my camera converted to a 720NM. I had no idea what that means. I don't know what 720NM means, but I watched Mr. Heaton's and he had his converted to that, so I copied him. Um, I've wanted to do it for years, but, you know, I didn't know what to do. And he inspired me, really. So I'm gonna little head down this little path. I'm gonna walk up the field to those trees and I just want to have a look and see what what I can capture and one thing I do I did want to try is that mast I thought well that mast would be jet black and everything around it might be white so I thought that might look quite good and I'm going to go up there tomorrow morning that's my plan I'm going to get up early early walk up go up the top maybe even have a look in that little woodland and just do something early in the morning but for now I just want to I just want to do something this evening I just want to do a little video I've been sat in the van editing I just wanted to get out and stretch my legs before I have some tea. And I wanted to speak to you guys. Um, I've had four days in the van on my own and I haven't really spoken to anybody. So, I like chatting to you. I really do. I like doing this. I'm out, as much as it is a pain in the bum sometimes, I enjoy talking to you guys. I enjoy coming for a walk and I enjoy just taking photographs really. So while I'm carrying this around in my hand, and I am literally carrying it around. I've got the 16 to 80 mm lens, which is a massive, massive zoom lens, and I've never really used it before because I don't really like the lens for super sharpness. But I'm thinking little X-T1 lens I don't use, perfect combination. So I put it together with the conversion. This looks crazily different. These dead fissily type things in the field look insane. They actually look almost spooky-like through this infrared. And I can just point the camera at something random like that and take a picture. It's just, how different does it look? Everything looks crazily different with this infrared. And like that telegraph pole or tower, whatever it is, you know, it's a, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a, a mast for possibly my radio signal on my phone because I've got 5G in the middle of nowhere. So that's got to be a three radio mast. 
got to be. For me to have 3G or 5G and to actually have a phone that's working, because my phone never works. So we've got these trees up this bank and we've got sheep. And I think that collection of trees just there, if that sheep will stay there, I think would look quite nice. So I'm gonna get a shot of that. I'm at F5.6, uh, ISO 400 to give me a little bit of handheld speed. And I'm just gonna point at the trees best I can. And, uh, t oh, that looks so cool. Oh, that looks so, so good. I wouldn't have thought. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow. I'm getting excited. <laughs> that looks amazing. I hope they come out as well on the camera, on the... And I'm only at, I'm at 80 mil as well. I'm not even, I'm just actually looking through the lens and taking pictures at 80 mil. Because these trees look sparse and awesome. And the little sheep underneath are all ghostly-like. It's brilliant. I just love this. This is so good. It's so different. So inspirational. Right, let's see if I can get them sheep while they're doing what they're doing. So basically what the infrared does, it turns foliage white, which is a bit crazy. I don't... It's the infrared light, isn't it? If you look at the infrared spectrum and all that blah, 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 that's, that's how it works, I think. So you're looking at the spectrum of light in a completely different way. So it turns the foliage a completely different color. And now that I've got the camera set to black and white, it's making all these stand out. Now, if I had the sky was really crimson blue, I think these would look even better, but the sky's not. The sky's just a, a pastel color at the moment. But the clouds behind are white. And it's, it's just if you catch the light right, it's like it's gone dark and just, I think you need more light. You need to sort of overexpose and get more light on the subject. I think that's how it works best. I think. <laughs> I don't know, I think. But yeah, interesting concept, eh? Interesting concept. The sky looks moody when you look through this. I'm going for a sunset as well. Sunset's coming down, so. Let's have a look at these trees the other way around. See if I've got more light on them, because they obviously need to be in the light rather than the shade. And when you're looking at the, the dead, gnarly, scenario i am just literally snapping and taking pictures because that's what i feel like doing i don't want to be clever i don't want to be technical i don't want to be you know telling you what to do and how to do it f5.6 handheld point shoot aperture priority what do you want make it simple eh? make it simple now i'm assuming these yeah, see, these are now really bright because I've come on the lighter side. So I'm looking away from the sky rather than at the sky. So I'm going to do the same here now. Let's set the camera at 35mm and shoot down in the valley. See, I like them ones. They're the ones that are, they're the ones that are catching my attention. Because they're leaning and they're leaning they look good and there's some hillside behind them and I can cheat I can roll my focus in and out a little bit with my finger so I can actually cheat and get what I want and now I want it I'm just gonna go in tight on them and see how that works the image stabilizers on this lens not in the camera so that seems to keep everything nice and steady and I'm literally just walking up for a sheep field. <laughs> no idea where I'm going. No idea whatsoever. But there's a farmer chasing me in a minute, won't I? Oh well. I've just found something really strange about this. This can't see smoke. Down there, and you can probably see it, down there there's a fire. It's been going, well, since I got here this afternoon. 
there's a fire down there. I'm going to point my camera that direction and I'm just going to take a snap and I'm going to point at it so you can tell I'm actually pointing at it. All right, so the fire is, I'm going to use you in fact, I'm going to hold you out and I'll use you to point at it. The fire is down there, right next to where the camera is. Okay, that's where the fire is. And you can't see it through this lens. I can't see anything. Like the fire doesn't exist. The smoke isn't even there. Why? Why is that? Why is that? That's strange. So I'm in a completely different field now. And um, I've got these two trees in me. I've got those sheep. I had to climb over the, the wooden fence at the end, so he's walking all the way back uh, without catching myself on the barbed wire. And I've got these couple of really twisty little trees here that I really, really like. And the footage on the screen looks really dark, but I'm ever so sorry. So let's, um, let's try again. Let's, uh, let's give this a go. If you don't know how I'm using this, I've got a capture clip on here. Peak Designs capture clip. It just attaches to, the, to your bag. Fantastic idea, it really is. Really can be very, very useful for when you just want to walk around and keep it simple. So off we go. Again, turn camera on. I'm just going to point and press. I'm just going to have a look. So we've got gnarly, gnarly. This is just really a black and white image, to be honest. So let's have a quick look at that. Quite like that. Let's go. I'm not so sure it works the other way around, but we'll go vertical as well. But yeah, the three little trees work quite nice. Let's see what this big tree does. The big tree is amazing. Yep, the big tree is amazing. So what I'm looking at is this big tree up here. And that looks awesome because the light's on it. Um, it's made the foliage look nice and bright. I think I'm going to get down a bit lower. And bang, a bit wider. Just to keep that tree on the bottom corner. That's awesome. Love that. That is what the black and white, that is what it's about. That is what infrared's all about. I do like that one, I do. So I'm in a field, I'm in a field wandering around. The sunset looks stunning at the moment. And I'm just literally looking for these couple of lone trees, try and get a bit of separation from anything around it. Focus on the tree, snap. Again, focus slightly wider snap. Now, you might think I'm just willy-nilly taking pictures and randomly just snapping away. Now, every time I take a photograph, I always think about the composition, leading lines, where it is positioned in the camera, what I'm doing with it. It's not just a case of pointing or pressing and snapping. I'm putting a little bit of thought into it. And again, we've got another one. I just need to get some separation on this. If I can get around here. This is a vertical shot all day long because we've got leading lines from the footpath in the bottom. If I get down lower, I can take advantage of that leading line and the clear sky. God, I make this look easy, don't I? <laughs> so as I'm walking up the field, we've got some more twisty gnarly things to have a look at and a play with. So again, I'm just gonna lift the camera up to my eye and just keep looking and seeing what they look like as I get closer to them and see if it works and see if I can do anything with it as I'm getting there. And I'm just gonna move around a little bit and see if I can put them in a position that makes them work. Because the bark stays black, but the tree shows white. So it's literally a move, moving around. See, now I've gone up a bank, I've lost them a little bit, so I need to go up higher so let's climb up here and see maybe a wide angle shot something like this and i'm just going to balance you on my leg while i'm taking the picture uh no it's no good because i've got the clutter of the one behind it so i need to get them on their own really and you can't quite get them on their own maybe that'll work take a low one and then take one 
higher with the sky on it. Maybe we can get this dead twig. See, now that looks good. I'm, I, I quite like that. I don't know why, but I quite like that. It's sort of, it looks good on the back of the camera, but I'm not sure how well it looks when uh, I take the images. So let's start at 16 and I can move in. See 16 mil, that's sort of okay. This is a bit like point of view, isn't it? Take that, let's move the camera around. As I'm moving it around, I'm just trying to see what works. And go lower, go higher. Not quite there, but I do like the, I like the, I like the dead thing leading through. I quite like that. I like that a lot. So that's 16 mil as wide as I can, as wide as I can possibly go. Focus on that and just take a snap like that. Crazy, isn't it? What you can do. You just want to play with your camera and get out for five minutes. I'm walking through some long grass now. Let's get on this path. See, these ones look really good. Can I separate these? That's the question. We've got lots of black and white, but the sky's looking white. We've got a lead in line. Let's focus on that one. Take a shot. See if I can bring the lead in line in from the bottom corner, which would be better, and separation to the trees. About there. I don't take this when I'm messing like this. I don't take it overly seriously. Are you looking at the sky? Sorry. Don't take it overly seriously. I'm just literally playing with a camera. So one more and we'll call it quits. All right, I'm just gonna try this little cluster of trees behind me. So I just need to be a bit further back. Now, again, I've got this nice cluster of trees. I'm just gonna focus on the trees. I back button for back button, back button focusing. Click. I've just seen some people in the field as well that made me stump. <laughs> so yeah, let's just do a bit of POV style. So we're looking at the camera. We're focusing on the trees. There's some people in the image at the moment. I'm just going to aim down and get rid of some of the sky and snap. Okay, and that's all I'm doing is just moving it around, having a look and seeing what takes my fancy. There's a bit of a dead tree up there. So let's go up and have a look at that one. I haven't even got to the dead tree and I've just found a, another one. I've got to go down this ditch and up the other side. Oh, I'm back on this big tree again. And this big tree, because of the way the light's falling on it, it just looks fantastic. Have a look, see what you think. So there's your big tree. Set it up in the middle. I'm at about 45 mil. Focus on the tree and the way the light's catching it. It's absolutely amazing. Hold it steady, click. What about if I come out a little bit? Let's just zoom out a little bit. Give you a little bit of breathing room. So focus on it again, like so. Just have a move around, see where my composition feels best. Central, just off to the left, click. <laughs> you enjoying this? I am. Right. So we'll look at these two. There's a bit of dead wood over there, and that's it, we're done. Under that natural arch. And again, we've got a couple of trees just here. Start at 16, I can always wind it in then. If I want, let's go to 23 mil. We've got a leading path, little leading path there. Put it off to, I'm gonna put it right in the center. There's actually two trees here. Just zoom in a bit more. Let's go to about 35 mil. So focus on the tree. Don't like it at 35. Let's go back out to about 25. Uh, focus on the tree, hold it steady, just move that, that line a little bit, just get that line where I want it. Simple black and white image of a tree with a tree in front of it. That's another one done. 
Right, it'd be nice if I can get this little lone tree on its own, because I think that one has got potential, but I'm not sure if I can get it on its own. These trees make, these trees, these sheep make this look easy. Yes, yeah, it blends into the background a little bit. See there? That's what I want to try and get on its own, but it blends into the background. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We've got to come back here. That sunlight must be... Oh, oh, wow. Um, look, 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 look. Look what your tree's doing now. See the sunlight's catching it. So I'm going to lift it up really high. So I've got this dead thing in the foreground. Okay, and then I'm gonna get the tree in the background. That, obviously where the sun's going down, is casting a red warm light on the tree. And because it's doing that, it's glowing. And I've now got the tree separated into the, it's sort of surrounded by the background. That's awesome. So nice. Got to go higher. Hold the camera still. Oh, I hope you're getting that. But because of the sunlight, that warm glow is catching that tree. So that tells me I've got to go back this direction. That's what it's telling me. And get that warm glow on the little trees. Oh, yes. So as I come around this corner, the sun is low in the sky and uh, there's a nice sunset going on. And if I point the camera at it, I just get this massive sun flare, but it also looks quite good in a funny sort of way. <laughs> so I've taken a picture of it. But that tree there is amazing. It really is amazing. It looks so nice with that red light on it. It must be that red warm light that's giving that, that effect. That's it, I'm done. I'm not going to go any more further that way. I'm going to go back to the van, do some editing, see if my solar panel's still on the roof and no one's nicked it, and get myself some tea. Right, how do I get out? Gate, that way. So, let's put this away on the cap clip. Job done. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this bit of a POV style infrared uh, photography trip it literally was getting a little bit of exercise and get off me bum for an hour and hopefully i've achieved it what a lovely sunset beautiful look at that look at that lovely 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 how nice and i got that out my window of the van can't beat it can you really Let's just ski. Let's just have one more little look at this tree here before we go, just to see what it does. And because the light's on it, it's standing out a little bit. Whether I like it or not is another matter. But we'll take it anyway. What about an infrared? selfie of me. I wonder if I can do that. What if I put it on a 10 second timer? Focus it on my face if I can, like so, and then press the button. Try pressing the button. Now it's doing something. Crazy. <laughs> Let's have a look. Wow. Spectacular. Ciao, guys. See you soon.